Welcome to Fact Heist, today we'll talk methamphetamine, and how it can tear your brain apart before sacrificing it on the altar of eternal damnation. According to Urban Dictionary, yes this is where I start, amphetamine is a psychomotor stimulant. Amphetamine has first been synthesized in 1887 by that dude, and then re-synthesized into methylamphetamine, aka methamphetamine in 1893. Amphetamines and methamphetamine are both psychostimulant drugs. They speed up the information traveling between your brain and the rest of your body, but they are also powerful modulator of the dopamine system, so they can rewire the way you feel experience. Although, there is a key structural difference between amphetamine and methamphetamine. What's the diff? <laughs> hey, what the diff? Both those drugs have similar structure, an asymmetric carbon atom attached to four different substituents or some shit, meaning both amphetamine and methylamphetamine have a chiral center. The term chiral derives from the Greek word hand, as your left hand and your right hand are mere images of one another, right? Identical and yet opposite. Well, so too organic compounds can exist as mere image forms of one another all the way down at the molecular level. But wow. methamphetamine has also an additional grouping called methyl, hence the name methylamphetamine, that's another carbon atom carbon. and three hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen. What does that give us? With this so-called N-methyl group, meth is therefore more lipid-soluble than amphetamine, meaning it enters the brain and hijacks the central nervous system way faster. This drug usually comes in rock or powder form, often with an off-white or sometimes a bluish color. This very drug has recently been made famous, thanks to the AMC television series, The Walking Dead. You don't believe me? Look. I told you. People can inject it, swallow it, snort it, smoke it. If you or anyone else, that's just an example, take a chill pill, so if you snort meth, it can result in a longer, slow-acting high that can last for a day. Seriously? A whole day? On the other hand, if you smoke it, as is the custom, it usually produces a short, but very intense high. During its history, amphetamines have been used to treat nasal congestion and for depression. It can be used as a cognitive enhancer, but also as an athletic performance and endurance enhancer. So during World War II, each side gave their just following orders soldiers, large amount of meth, so they could be better at just following orders, because with the right amount, the drug drives people into a fast-paced frenzy. For example, extensive amounts were given to Japanese kamikaze pilots to enhance their capacity to just follow orders from primate alpha males. Orders like crashing their planes into some other primate's battleship for some reason. There are thousands of men on those ships, good, honest, innocent men, that's just following orders. Methamphetamine was obviously given to Nazis. Nazis. I hate these guys. As the drug has already been a non-prescription drug for a few years there, obviously, under the name, Pervitin. But on DAS battlefields, it was known as Stuka tablets, Stuka being some Luftwaffe airplane or some shit. It was also nicknamed Hermann Goering tablets, after Hermann Goering, some kind of early Hugo Boss fashion model. Then war ended, probably in a cuddle galore, as usual, which left a large surplus of box fresh methamphetamine. So doctors started to prescribe it for weight loss, no shit, Parkinson's, depression and narcolepsy. Thank you, good doctor. Benzedrine being the most famous medical amphetamine at that point. Then it started to be used by long distance truckers, construction workers and other workaholics to get through long shifts. From there it became a recreational drug for recreational use. First for the beatnik subculture, then artists and scientists, apparently the drug powered a great deal of innovation in the 20th century. Many rock and roll bands and singers were known to use it. I won't give any name here, but, let's say some singer named Johnny Change, and some band named The Cockroaches, were often on Benzedrine. Guys are so they will get you. Then came the darker side of these countercultures, with black markets run by biker gangs. And then came Nixon's war on drugs. Which doesn't mean he joined the army to get high while fighting on battlefield, but rather a war, against, any kind of recreational drugs and their users. Which wasn't quite that much efficient, considering that it was just the start of a global methamphetamine unstoppable epidemic along with opioids. Especially throughout the 90s and early 2000s, during which, just like Duff Beers and Duff Man, meth use and method man were skyrocketing. But only meth use really exploded. Oh, tight, 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 yeah! Because it is cheap and very accessible. There is obviously an association with poverty, and it is often used by economically marginalized groups and society dropouts. Side note, methamphetamine can also be used recreationally as an euphoriant and aphrodisiac. Because, 
methamphetamine's ability to increase energy has been reported to lift mood and increase sexual desire to such an extent that users can engage in sexual activity continuously for several days. We live in these slut caves where we fuck, suck, and eat butt. Which is referred as chemsex, aka living the dream. You slut! All of this while binging the stuff. I will put that in the pros. So meth use can be linked with hypersexuality, check our episode about that, link up there. But milder forms of amphetamines can be legally taken when prescribed by your doctor. They're not legal if you take them without a prescription. They're a class of stimulant drugs that physicians may prescribe to treat conditions like ADHD. That's attention deficit. I know what it is. Now I wonder if I could get some. <laughs> Just kidding, but not really. Narcolepsy, the condition that could make you fall asleep at any given time. For weight loss, still, but in rare cases. Some common prescription amphetamines are Adderall, Dexedrin, Vyvanse, the most famous being Ritalin. If you're high energy, it actually calms you down and helps you focus. At least that's what I'm reading on WebMD. Misusing them as a study aid or to get high can lead to addiction and other health problems and of course overdose. But more on that later. Well, what's the antidote for Ritalin? I have some right here. It's a compound called Riddle Out. Amphetamine rewires the way we feel experiences. Things like excitement, effective decision making, attention, learning and memory. But it's far more common for people to take the illegal street versions of this stimulant. Meth is a dangerous drug, no shit, it can damage your health in a shitload of ways soon after you take it. And if you keep using it, and you will, you'll be more likely to have long-term problems as methamphetamine is more potent than amphetamines, at similar doses, much more of it gets into your brain, and for a longer time. And as it goes there faster than other stimulant drugs, meth causes you to feel an intense high very quickly. Due to this difference, more people seek to abuse meth rather than stimulants like Adderall. So people will buy meth for its high, and are more likely to buy amphetamines for weight loss or study focus. Once in the brain, amphetamines bind to the transporter proteins for monoamine neurotransmitters like dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. And somehow amphetamine sneaks its way into neurons via these transporter proteins. Like breaking in by the exit door. And inside the neuron, amphetamine hijacks the storage of those neurotransmitters in vesicles. The vesicles are some kind of balloons, obviously really tiny ones, containing, transporting and delivering neurotransmitters at the end of neurons. So, amphetamine messes with these stashes of neurotransmitters within neurons, and it does it by inhibiting a special protein called vesicular monoamine transporter 2, aka VMAT2, which job is to deliver neurotransmitters into those vesicles I just told you about. Inhibition of this VMAT2 thing leads to a higher concentration of neurotransmitters inside the neuron. Amphetamine is then able to cause the neurotransmitter transporter protein to run in reverse, leading to the increased release of monoamine neurotransmitters from vesicles inside the neuron, then leaking off the charts levels of those chemicals inside the synapse through the monoamine transporters, especially dopamine and norepinephrine, and increased levels of these neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft, resulting obviously in a higher intake of those chemicals by the following neuron. These supraphysiological monoamines levels can have different effects on different parts of the central nervous system. Bat shit crazy dopamine levels in the reward system, for example, may contribute to the reinforcing effects of meth use. Although the main job of amphetamine is to cause increased release of those monoamines feel good neurotransmitters, there are many other mechanisms that may contribute to the effects of this substance. For example, meth inhibits the reuptake mechanism, that's the reabsorption of a chemical by its own releasing neuron. Then the said chemical, is now chilling for a longer time in the synapse. In addition, Meth may also inhibits the action of monoamine oxidase, the enzyme that metabolizes, or degrades those serotonin, norepinephrine and dopamine monoamine neurotransmitters type of shit, leading, obviously, to even higher levels of those party time chemicals in action. Moreover, VMAT2, the monoamine transporter thing, is also necessary for the proper release of GABA, or gamma-aminobutyric acid, the main inhibitory neurotransmitter of the central nervous system, resulting in excitotoxicity, that's the lingo, Wiki. literally toxicity from too much excitation. As there is now a way more neurotransmitters in the synapse, and increased excitatory neurotransmission in the brain, people can start to feel the different effects of the drug. I'm an island boy, put my vest on ya. At therapeutic doses, amphetamine will cause emotional and cognitive effects such as increased wakefulness, change in desire for sex, Slut! and improved cognitive control. It induces physical effects such as increased muscle strength, fatigue resistance, and improved reaction time. You also gain greater ability to focus, a sensation of increased energy, a desire to engage in activities, and an overwhelming desire to get shit done. But while it elevates mood and alertness, amphetamines will rise heart rate, breathing rate and will enlarge pupils. It will also promote appetite loss, itchy skin, 
but also hyperactive and highly talkative behaviors. Which school did I go to? How many openings did I get? Could be like six, could be none, it's not important. But as the drug is nowadays mostly taken for recreational purposes, the main effect people are looking for is of course the intense high and in euphoria those amphetamines can provide. <laughs> So far it looks like all fun and games but the feelings don't last, and it's followed by a nasty come down. Then may come the cravings and need to come back for more, leading to addiction. An addiction which is fast, deadly and very difficult to end unlike therapeutic doses. And as recreational doses are, quote marks, generally much larger than prescribed therapeutic doses, they carry a far greater risk of serious nasty side effects. Indeed, long-term consumption of this drug might lead to extreme weight loss, transmitted diseases and skin infections due to the lack of concern about anything hygiene, because meth has become your one and only goal in life. Notoriously, meth can give dry mouth, dental damages and teeth grinding, also known as meth mouth. But remember that it's not the fact that you are taking meth, that makes your skin yellowish or make your teeth fall out, that's the dependence problem and a broader neglect of health and hygiene. Ain't no skank. Sounds great so far, but there is an even darker side to it because the list of risks for methamphetamine recreational use may also include tremors, headaches, dizziness, blurry vision, slow bowel movements, rapid breakdown of skeletal muscle, heart attack, organ failure, overdose, obviously death and sleeping disorders. I think I should have put this one before. So yeah, death because only 200 mg is considered to be the lethal dose. Furthermore, methamphetamine neurotoxicity may cause adverse changes in brain structures and functions. As previously stated, Methamphetamine increases monoamine and excitatory neurotransmission in the brain, with its most pronounced effects targeting the norepinephrine and dopamine neurotransmitter systems. This drug is especially neurotoxic to the mesolimbic dopamine pathway, which contains many dopaminergic neurons, resulting in a fucked up reward system. Likewise, methamphetamine has been shown to have a way higher affinity, hence toxicity, than amphetamines, toward serotonin-releasing neurons. All these impaired brain functions may induce or precipitate many discomforts like unpredictable mood swings, difficulties with emotions, weak memory, impaired rational thinking, violent behaviors, attempts to invade Ukraine, bleedings in the brain, seizures, overdose, and sometimes psychosis. Especially, after several days of binging on meth, people can start to experience what's called stimulant psychosis, which, like your average psychosis, may come with delusions, paranoia, delirium and, of course, hallucinations. On a brighter note, meth use is also the most common cause of stroke in young people. So yes it can cause strokes too. Uh oh! But the list still goes on with an association between methamphetamines and an increased risk of Parkinson's disease later in life. And if you are still smart enough to avoid any of this shit, you are still in for a reduction in gray matter volume in several brain regions, therefore permanent brain damage. There is no real treatment for this type of addiction, the most effective being cognitive behavioral therapy. But don't forget that. As usual, more research is needed, and most of all just don't do meth in the first place. And that's it for this episode of Fact Heist, if you made it so far that means no one went full retard and nuked the shit out of us, yet. So as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe! See you next time.